Hey, what's up, guys? This is Cody the Coin Raptor, and I want to go ahead and talk to you about the Treasury reports. All right, this is the first of three Treasury reports that were released regarding a central bank digital currency and digital assets. So I want to go ahead and give you guys my thoughts and highlight the most important parts. All right, so starting uh, at the top here. All right, so the first point I wanted to talk about is they are not entirely sure about whether or not they want to even develop a CBDC or a central bank digital currency in the first place. All right, so that would be uh, in case one is determined to be in the national interest, then only then would they advance work on a central bank digital currency. Now, the Treasury Department also recognizes a need for an instant payment system. All right. And now you can think of an instant payment system as a transactions that settle near real time or at real time, as opposed to something like an ACH transfer that takes several days to settle. All right. So now they have this Fed Now service that's going to be coming into effect uh, shortly. Now, this Fed Now service will give you instant instant uh, settlements for transactions. However, it does not support cross-border payments. Now, this is entirely different than CBDCs, but I thought I'd throw this out there because um, they, they talk about Fed now, but it is not it does not support cross-border payments. And that is oftentimes one of the greatest use cases of Bitcoin and of stable coins is being able to make remittance payments across borders. All right. So they also see stable coins as a significant risk and want to regulate them. All right. So they they've looked at certain certain use cases of stable coins. They've seen things like the Terra collapse, and that has kind of accelerated the the government's want to regulate a lot of these stable coins. All right. A CBDC would be legal tender, and uh, it would process instantly, and it would also be exchangeable for actual dollars. So that's what this would look like. You have a CBDC. Uh, kind of, these are kind of like the goals of the central bank digital currency. So they would, in fact, be digital tender or legal tender. They'd be exchangeable one for one with actual dollars, and they would process payments instantly. Okay. Uh, one other thing they mentioned here is that it's not entirely sure about whether they would pay interest on a CBDC. So I'm guessing in uh, in a certain account, you'd be able to store them or a wallet, you'd be able to store them and they would possibly pay a certain amount of uh, a certain percent interest every year. So that's something that they've posed. That's not entirely sure if they're going to wind up doing that or not. They've also said that it could potentially be uh, permissioned or permissionless. However, I don't think that it's likely that they'd make it permissionless. They talk about using a distributed ledger technology, DLT, and potentially using this permissionless system. However, I think for a, a central bank, they're going to probably wind up doing a, a more permissioned system. So the difference here is that in a permission system, you can have you have to have specific people running nodes and a permissionless system anybody could technically run the node so for a system like this they would probably want to keep it permissioned and not just allow anybody to open nodes here for the central bank digital currency okay <clears throat> so they also highlight one of the most important risks to opening this the cbdc and that would be basically that it would collect a massive amount of payment information and if that was public it would invite privacy violations and cyber attacks the cbdc would collect a massive amount of data and that data could be used for things like data mining potentially speaking they could get information uh, based on the the transactions of of how much money it is going where at what time and between two entities that's a pretty massive amount of information that they could collect uh, with the cbdc now it's not necessarily I, based on what I've seen here, it's either going to be set up as either the um, a single tiered system, which would basically be with the CBDC as a central bank, or a two tiered CBDC where you have intermediaries, which would be like banks and non bank partners that would run this type of system. So in the in the first option here, in the single tier, you have the central bank collecting all of that information and processing all that information, and that could potentially be um, huge privacy violation. And on top of that, they'd be collecting this information to be used for whatever purpose that they want. 
Now, in this two-tiered system, however, that would have like kind of like a similar type of system that we have now with fiat, where you have banks and uh, non-bank intermediaries that would conduct those transactions and also have these transactions uh, taken care of. So they'd be collecting that information. These non-bank intermediaries would be collecting all the information. Now, it's not entirely sure about whether or not they're going to use the single tier or the two-tiered system but they've laid out the roadmap to using either. All right. They also want to go ahead and use private wallets, okay? And they want to be able to use private wallets that will be able to store digital assets as well as CBDCs for convenience, all right? Now, they've also said here that the code for our CBDC might be open source, However, again, I, I think that that's not the likely outcome. It'll probably wind up being more of a closed source code uh, because the issue with o an open source code in this context is that it would provide an unnecessary risk. It would need extensive cybersecurity protection in order to prevent hackers and uh, illicit use and, and people from trying to exploit the system. So I don't think that open source would be likely. Uh, next... Also very important, considering the possibility of the Treasury Department or the Fed developing a CBDC is, is the need for it, okay? So what they put out here is that a that foreign CBDCs and digital assets provide little competition to the dollar status as a world reserve currency. This is because no other competitor has the resilience, history, strength, or stability that the U.S. economy has. And I think that right now what they're saying here is that they don't need a CBDC in order to compete with a foreign a central bank digital currency because the dollar status as a world reserve currency is not in question. And the reason why this is important is because of the fact that uh, if it's a national security interest, they're going to push heavy for a central bank digital currency. And it doesn't seem like they're at that point just yet. All right. They've also pointed out that uh, foreign CBDCs would make it easier for to invade, to evade sanctions and allow illicit activity. So, what they're trying to say here is that these, these foreign CBDCs would provide an alternate means uh, of payment in order to evade sanctions. Okay, so instead of like a traditional uh, banking payment system, they can use these uh, digital currencies. All right. The Treasury Department also points out here that uh, the use of a central bank digital currency should not be mandatory. Or in this case, should not be mandated. All right. Now, this is also extremely important here because what they're saying is that you shouldn't have to use this system if they put one in place. So this could change. And if it does change, we can go back here and say, well, all right, the... The whole goal originally, according to Treasury, the, according to the Treasury Department, is to not force people to use this system. So people who don't want to use this system should not be forced to use this system. All right. And when we come down here, I, I think I found probably the most significant risk to imposing a CBDC. And that is uh, in times of stress. It would uh, attract significant interest if investors wanted to move their cash to, pre to uh, preserve their assets. Okay, so in case you have something like a bear market like we have right now, oftentimes you see people sitting on the sidelines with cash. So a CBDC would be very attractive for investors to get out of assets that are performing very poorly. And what could happen is if the if the CBDC isn't set up properly, it's not scaled properly, that could cause a financial panic and a financial crash in the system and then have um, it could have a domino effect on the rest of financial services. So the failure of the system would cause panic and damage to the financial system. So that is a major, major risk with uh, development of a central bank digital currency. They have to make sure if they do this, they get it right. And if they don't get it right, then you can have potentially disastrous consequences. Okay. So now I want to go ahead and just give you my my uh, my final summation on this report. All right. So the Treasury Department is getting serious with the idea of introducing a CBDC. However, it's not clear if it's in the national interest to do so. 
A CBDC would probably be highly centralized with a similar tiered structure as fiat. This system would facilitate instant payments on, in the U.S. and would eventually include global usage. They would need to implement KYC, Know Your Customer, to cut down on, on illicit activity and cybercrimes. The Treasury Department sees stablecoins as risky and destabilizing. They don't see foreign CBDCs or digital assets as a threat to the dollar as a reserve currency, so they aren't a threat to national security. In my opinion, however, a CBDC is likely in the future and it is going to be a threat to stablecoins, but I don't think it's going to be a, a threat to digital commodities like Bitcoin or Ethereum. Now, that could change in the future. We don't know. I don't have my crystal ball here. I can't give you the the actual outcome of what's going to happen in the future but that is how i see this after reading this whole report and again this is report one of three i'll be covering the other two reports as well but after reading this first report those are my takeaways if you guys have um uh, additional takeaways be sure to leave comments on the video i appreciate that a like or subscribe uh and also check me out on twitter if you get a chance all right this is cody the coin raptor signing out